Hey crypto family, so I've been out for the past couple days, so I'm gonna go over some of the news that's happened recently. But first, let's go and look at the market. So we can see Bitcoin's up over 2% to $7,636. So it's good to see that showing some life again. Um, EOS is up over 21% to $14.76. And that's actually due to a mainnet launch that happened recently, which I'll go over in a couple minutes. And then all the other coins are up anywhere from 2 to 30%. So again, it's great to see showing some life again, um, showing some green. Uh, market cap's $343 billion. So again, hopefully we can keep this trend going. But I also want to go over some charting here. So there's a four hour chart for Bitcoin. And I drew this as kind of a sending triangle here. Again, it doesn't have touching points all the way. But, you know, there's some support or some resistance that was drawn here. And then you can see it steadily followed this uptrend. It's made higher lows. So that's why I drew it like this. And we can see as soon as it broke above that $7,500 level, um, you know, that's when it went up all the way to a high of $7,520. And then... Uh, actually a high of 77.27 so and then then it's just been consolidating around the $7,600 level uh, that's turned to be this support right now so again we've bounced off it a couple times so hopefully we'll keep this level but our next resistance we're looking at is about 8,000 uh, that's been the resistance and the support for the past couple of months and then going up here we can see 9,000 is the next resistance or about 9,100 so again Looking at that um, as we move forward and hopefully seeing we can break that on our way to 10,000. But one of the things I wanted to cover is a lot of people have been talking about how on the fifth or sixth of every month, a reversal happens for Bitcoin. And they noticed that recently. And I just wanted to point this out here. So these orange lines I drew are the, uh, are the, the dates for the fifth and sixth. And you can see here on the sixth of February, we can see this bounce happened. So right here, that's when the reversal happened. And then it got to a high. And then here on the 5th of March, we can see a reversal happen to the downside. And then we get to the 6th of April, we can see a reversal started to happen here on the upside. And then we got to the 6th of May and we can see it reversed again. So again, the 5th or 6th of every month, it seems to be a reversal happening. and. I kind of drew my prediction here, um, sitting at about this $7,300 level for the 5th of June. So probably the 5th or 6th of June, um, I think we may have a little bit more of the downside and then we'll bounce up there. But again, knowing cryptos, um, you know, anything's possible. So we could just keep going up from here. But again, I just drew these lines here to show you a lot of people are talking about this right now. Um, not, not a whole lot, but a few YouTube personalities and then some people in Discord chat are talking about it. And I just want to bring that out and kind of, you know, have everyone look at this because if it does happen, then we know that, you know, that trend may continue in the future. So I just want to point that out, but it's good to see so far that we are moving to the upside and, you know, hopefully we continue to do so. So let's look at some news articles here. Uh, one of the big ones that everyone was talking about yesterday was the Visa card outage. So in Europe, basically the Visa network went down. A lot of people weren't able to pay using their Visa card, either had to get out cash or they had to, um, you know, or pay in cash. So that was a big thing that was coming up. There's Visa Europe, um, their Twitter here. It says, we're currently experiencing a service disruption, which is preventing some Visa transactions in Europe from being processed. We're investigating the cause and working as quickly as possible to resolve the situations. We'll keep you updated. So a lot of people in the cryptocurrency community kind of, you know, laughed at this because they're saying, you know, the Bitcoin network never went down and basically highlighted the importance of cryptocurrencies in times like these. Um, there's an article that came out after this. It says visa outage in Europe highlights potential of cryptocurrency payments. So uh, probably about 12 hours after that outage, the visa network started working again. But it's talking in this article, it says... Payment technology has introduced a high degree of convenience for consumer globally. When that technology does not work as advertised, a very problematic scenario ensues. Visa suffered from major outages across Europe for most of the day on Friday. This highlights the need for alternative solutions, including cash and even cryptocurrency. So again, it just mentions how cryptocurrencies could help alleviate this problem and having another means of payment versus being stuck. Um, a lot of people, it says there are problems that, you know, people were having versus like if they had to pay for the train um you know it took they only had their visa credit card it caused problems and again there's just a lot of problems that day that were created for you know people that was unnecessary so 
Um, it's kind of as good. I mean, you know, it's bad that it happened, but it's good in the sense that it highlighted the use for cryptocurrencies and, you know, just how useful they can be in times like these. So just want to bring that out and, you know, show you what everyone was talking about yesterday. Um, another big thing a couple days ago, Bittrex actually listed USD trading pairs after landing banking partner. So this was huge. Um, basically what that is, if you go to their Bittrex website, you can see here they have a USD market. So not USDT, which is down here, it's USD. So basically it converts directly to fiat, not tether, but directly to fiat cash. So you can trade from USD to true USD, from USD to USD tether, or from USD to Bitcoin. So this is huge because a lot of people, you know, they have fear about Tether. You know, it's not being backed, essentially. And so, in a way, if they can trade their Bitcoin directly to USD, uh, directly to that fiat, then, you know, that has, you know, a sense of security for them. Now, in this article, it mentions that, um, it says, Bloomberg reports that Seattle-based exchange has signed a banking agreement with New York-based financial institution Signature Bank that will allow it to begin accepting USD deposits and listing cryptocurrencies for trading directly against the US dollar. And basically, Bittrex CEO Bill Shahara says it's been a long path. He says, you know, finding a banking partner has been a struggle for cryptocurrencies exchanges because of the, basically the, um, you know, the whole fear surrounding cryptocurrencies and the, the perception that people have about them. And then he said, um, basically, there's just a lot of background checks that the banking institutions were having for them, um, a lot of AML KYC processes, and basically making sure they have all their finances in a row. So, you know, luckily, Bittrex was able to get this partner with this bank and be able to offer these USD trading pairs. So I think that'll just be another tool that will allow you know outside investors to come into the market so it'll kind of create another sense of security and again just have more volume coming into the crypto market so i thought that was definitely positive um, another article i want to cover is uh hobie exchange so those who don't know it's the third largest crypto exchange and it's um it said they're launching their exchange traded fund their first crypto based exchange traded fund which is june 1st yesterday and this was big news because one, um, a lot of new investors are kind of weary about, you know, which coins to pick. Uh, you don't know that, you know, they aren't comfortable doing their research and basically they kind of feel it's too risky. So what Hobie did is they launched this exchange, exchange traded fund, which basically it tracks, it tracks like a diverse set of assets as one initial asset. So for example, kind of like the S and P 500, it tracks 500 different companies, and it tracks all of them, but it keeps it into one ETF you can buy that in a sense, it almost like averages out in a way, it has some more weight in some companies versus others, but it's kind of a way of diversifying yourself without investing in all these different coins. You're just investing in this one ETF asset. So again, it mentions how it says, they suggest the new investment instrument will potentially help new users to gain exposure to the crypto markets by giving them a stake in a diversified basket of assets. This would reportedly allow investors who do not want to follow individual crypto assets to buy into the general market trend and disregard the noise of individual coins. And it says, you know, for the ETF subscriptions, you have an option to pay using USDT, Bitcoin, Ethereum, or Hobie's native token, HT. And it says subscriptions are limited to a range of $100 to $10 million, or equivalent for each account. So again, you know, this is just one step into the ETF adoption. Um, again, you know, there's been applications to the SEC in the United States to allow ETFs onto, um, you know, the NASDAQ and the actual exchanges so that, you know, more investors can come into the market. And basically they haven't allowed those yet. So ETF is kind of the next big catalyst that a lot of people are waiting for, for the United States. So hopefully, you know, Hobie having this and just showing that ETFs aren't a bad thing and then it's just, you know, safer and it just will allow more investors to come into the market. It's, you know, hopefully this kind of paves the way for that. So I just want to bring that up. And then that, last but not least, I wanted to mention um, EOS. So I mentioned to you, you know, EOS was up 20% because of their, you know, mainnet launch coming. And it says their version 1.0 launched. And basically what that was is it's it says block one release statements announcing the release of EOS IO version 1.0 and their develop, developer portal. This would be an open source blockchain software which would enable users to create and develop various blockchain-based applications. 
So here it says the EOS platform will provide users with the functions of low latency block confirmation of 0.5 seconds and optional high overhead with low latency BFT finality. And then it also says they have, you know, supports up to a thousand transactions per second. And basically it's an open source software, you know, without any warranty of any kind or license. And it says the EOS smart contracts platform is being powered by third party libraries from Banarin and Wavum, which include the Apache license and BSD3 clause respectively. So again, a lot of developers are going to use this. Um, you know, EOS has been an open platform and it's very, um, you know, it's expressed that a lot and it's good to see that they're actually, you know, going through with it and launching this version 1.0. And I think a lot of people are going to like this. And again, it's just kind of one step to spreading that cryptocurrency adoption and just giving another avenue for developers. So I just want to bring that out and, you know, this is the reason why EOS has been up over 21% today. But again, you know, always be cautious any, anytime a coin rises this much, um, you know, maybe wait for a pullback, uh, set stop losses if you bought in low, just in case to secure those profits. But again, not financial advice, just my opinion. But with that, um, that's all I got for today. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, comment if you have any questions, and subscribe if you haven't. Till next time, thanks for watching.